do 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 Good morning, Steve. Good morning. How's your throat? Uh, it's only about half here today. Whoa. You're going to have to get that taken care of, I swear. You know, I went out to the ballpark last night and enjoyed a baseball game. And, you you know, did. We're, we're, I get so darn work at uh, work. <laughs> Bill and Walter. <laughs> I get so darn, so darn worked up at baseball game. Uh, boy, I don't even know if I'll be able to do the show today. I didn't know it was out of this bad. <clears throat> you do get worked up, I guess. I, I love baseball, Gary. You know, and I nothing, no, there's nothing more fun to me than going out to the park and enjoying a game and yelling at the players. I've known you for several months now, and that seems to be your thing. <laughs> so I assume that is what you did last night. What did you do last night? Um, <coughs> I was uh, just watching television and yeah. doing, doing the normal no stuff. Deal. No, Boy, look at the paper this morning. They had uh, some What's sort that? of a riot or something at Comiskey Park. They did. Mm -hmm. Thousands of youths taking part in an anti-disco rally. I heard about Boy, that. that. That makes me sick. You know, these kids. I'll tell you. Swarm on field mm -hmm. at uh, Comiskey Park, ignoring the scoreboard sign, asking them to please return your seats. I guess the please. scoreboard is not as pers personal as you'd want it to be. I guess not. It says it. I can see it right here in the front of sometimes. Please, please return, return to, to your, your seats. seats. They're not doing well, Maybe they are in this picture. You can't tell where they're going. Every which way, it kind of looks like. Every which way. Police arrived to control crowd that took over the field between games of a White Sox uh, Detroit Tigers doubleheader. They set bonfires and damaged turf, causing second game postponement. Hmm. So you didn't obviously stay for any second game. No, it's a good thing, too. I would have lost my whole voice, I think. I think so, because you were really rooting it up, I hear, in the first game. Yeah. Because you were really into the Sox. Mm -hmm. I just love baseball. It's my thing. I know. You go to a lot of the Cubs games, too, and they'll sit there and yell yourself silly. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. It's Friday the 13th. I see no problem in just doing today's show and resting up over the weekend. Mm-hmm. Okay. Very nice luau shirt you have on. And Thank you. I, I'm i just, you know, just horse today. Just horse. horse. Bad horsey? <laughs> okay. Huh, yeah, can you say bad coho lips? <laughs> <laughs> sure. You maniacs. <laughs> we got done last night at the Communist Park. We were out in the middle of the field, of course, world's largest disco uh, demolition. We got all done, everybody's grooving. We drive off the field in the Jeep. We come around to the front, go upstairs. All of a sudden, I look on the TV. I thought I was seeing a replay of last year's World Series or something at the end. You know? But I didn't see Reggie Jackson or anybody running through. No, it was you maniacs out on the field, jumping through bonfires. <laughs> oh, boy. It's all over the paper this morning. It's all, all over, over the world. I know. Unlike <laughs> Skylab, which Perth, Australia only knows. Holy smokes, you maniacs. Again, don't believe everything you read in here. I think that's a, a safe statement this morning, but the only safe one I've heard. Yeah, I don't think it was quite as bad as it's going to be made out, uh, made out to be all day long. But <laughs> it's kind of out of our hands now and yours. We appreciate the, all of you that showed up last night. There was just an incredible crowd there. Largest crowd I heard since Bill Vec took yeah, over the White was, Sox. I believe... Uh, 50,000, 51,000 50, inside. 55 in the park and maybe 12,000 outside the park. I couldn't get in. I can remember a few months ago after a disco takeover at a place called the Point East. We said, well, we're probably going to have to wait until we do another one of these. Of course, we didn't. We did the one in Hanover Park, but we thought we should wait until we can do it in Comiskey Park because we had to find a place big enough to hold all the insane coho lips. We thought there'd be no problem. <laughs> mm. In fact, the ballpark said seventeen, twenty thousand. Oh, maybe. Yeah, yeah we, we nice we and conservative. Nice no day. Problem. Sure. So I'm at fifty-five and twelve. How much is that? Sixty-seven thousand in St. Coho lips out there last night. Sixty-seven thousand. Do 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 do. <laughs> do 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 do. Fifty-five thousand disco records. Do 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 do. Blown up on. 
on cue from the Coho Commander. Do 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 do. In the middle of the field. Do 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 do. In between games, even though it turned out not to be in between games at all, do do. It turned out to be at the end of the night. Do 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 do. It was wild. I don't know what else to say. I think uh, for the most part everything was wonderful. Some maniac cohos got wild, went down on the field and tore some things up, which you shouldn't have done. Bad little cohos, but what are you going to do now? I mean, I think we ought to just sit back today and let this take its course. I think There's everybody, else, we everybody else is going to talk about it all day long on every other station. And we're getting calls from TV stations all over the universe and radio stations and newspapers. There's a guy come in this morning. There's a guy from... <coughs> <coughs> from the Sun Times, right? Yes. Here, waiting to talk to us. <laughs> Holy smokes! Holy how cow! How did it happen? Harry, Gary, how you doing up there? Boy, but my voice is just shot. It is real Boy. bad. Boy, real bad. Well, I was trying to, you know, help with the crowd control a little bit, get the calls back in their seats. <laughs> that would have been nice. They had the field cleared. We were sitting there waiting for the second game. Yeah, and then they you did decided... not leave the building or the confines of Comiskey Park, as was reported on yeah. several stations. They, you were there the they whole. They made it evening. sound like I was a chump that I would split you know, after, <laughs> after I started the whole thing. No, I didn't. We didn't start any of the thing on the field. Let's make no. That what clear. I mean, you know, st you know, it was my idea to up disco oh, yeah. and stuff. But after that. When we yeah. got off the field, nature takes its course. Hey, beer, I beer, and nature. Help, people get a buzz on. I want to go running around on the field. You know, <laughs> I ain't a babysitter. I'm a disc jockey. <laughs> well, uh, let's do some news here. I'm gonna drink some coffee. See if I can calm my voice down. Let's hope that doesn't. Maybe some honey in that coffee there. Mm, I could go for a honey up here this morning. I'll tell you. It's six eighteen. Get out of here, Danielle. Come on. Seventy four degrees. High today in the eighties. Maybe some rain in the forecast today. Yeah. Well, a capacity house last night at White Sox Park got out of hand between games of a scheduled twenty-nine double header. Just what it says here. The second game was canceled after thousands of fans ran down on the field following the destruction of thousands of disco records. That was headed up by, I think, you know him, a luau shirt type guy. One fan who attended the event attributed the problem to lack of security. Steve did his demolition, and he was off the field for a good five to eight minutes before anybody even entered the field. There was no security whatsoever guarding the outside of the field, preventing people from coming on. And when 20 to 25 people came on creating the anti-disco signs, there was no security whatsoever to throw these people out. The second game has supposedly been rescheduled as a doubleheader on Sunday. You want to go out there and root again. You're a good guy in the baseball spectator field. Prices for gasoline in Illinois are still going up, but a survey shows that the rise is slowing down. The Chicago Motor Club said yesterday that for the first time in nearly a month, average prices... Right here in the station. Right here next to the receptionist's office. You could run a tuxedo right here? Mm-hmm. Come on in, guys, and Rex will measure your inseam, okay? Super cheap. <laughs> All right, we got uh, a couple more here, then we'll come back. I'll go away. Earthlings, if the children of the sun... Visionary music on Capricorn Records and Tapes. Available at Sound Warehouse. Craig. One of the most sought-after names anywhere for home or automotive hype. have never seen anything like this. The gigantic Craig Factory Warehouse Sale at Playback. Craig's factory authorized sale is on right now, only at Playback, the electronic playground. Shadow traffic at 624, Mount Prospect at Euclid and Gibbons. Need some plywood, though. Oh, it's uh, doing my basement. Six by six foot piece. No, no, they're always four by oh, eight. Oh, I see. But I mean, mean thick like half inch or quarter inch. I don't know. We'll have to check on that. Yeah, let me know. I need a half inch, okay? Half inch plywood? Yeah. Doing it up in... Uh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm actually, this is for the bathroom, a little, you know, to encircle the commode. Because right now I only have uh, uh, three walls around it, and uh, you know when you have company over, and we're all down uh, using the wet bar in the partially uh, uh, finished basement. It's uh, did you install the shuffleboard into the tile yet? Oh uh, yeah, you have. Mm -hmm. We've got cool. the shuffleboard down there, and all the the old style signs, you know, that light oh, up. Oh, it's really shaping up. But uh, yeah, it's. I'd like to get four walls on the bathroom. Okay, we'll uh, check that for obvious reasons, you know. 
Uh, if you'll be traveling on the expressways after the rush hour this morning, be ready for delays as midday work continues on the outbound and inbound Ryan. In various spots between the downtown area and 35th, uh, 31st rather, will be closed. On the inbound Ryan Express Lane from 63rd to 31st, the left lane will be closed. On the inbound Kennedy in various locations from North Avenue and Grand, the left lane will be closed. On the Ontario feeder ramp, the center lane will be closed. That's all midday work. If you're getting ready to hit the road and need a ride there, the Metro Help Ride Board can help you along. 929-5139 is their phone number. Considerable cloudiness, hazy, very warm and humid today with scattered showers near the lake and southern sections. <coughs> Highs will be in the 80s, but lower near the lake. Partly cloudy, warm, humid tonight. Chance of a thunderstorm, low in the 70s. Partly sunny, hot and humid tomorrow. Chance of more thunderstorms, high around 90. 73 right now at O'Hare, 74 at Midway, 72 at the Loop at 626. I'm Gary Meyer, and here's Uncle Steve. <laughs> okay, snot. <laughs> Oh, I think the uh, ticket stubs, if uh, you still have your stub from last night, from the second game, uh, I think the stubs will, will be honored Saturday and Sunday at Communist Park, okay? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. You ought to pick yourself up a copy of the Slum Times and a copy of the Tribune this morning. Check it out. There's so much went on last night. It's unbelievable. I can't believe they're making such a big deal out of it, but... What are we going to do? <laughs> oh, would you please not make a big deal out of it? Boy, it's on the front page of the Sun-Times. On the front page of the Tribune? I don't think so. There's a picture on the Tribune there. Well, no, they have a much more tasteful picture in the front of the Tribune here. They have a guy with his head blown off. Mm. Jeez. Oh, they showed this on the news yesterday. Huh. They opened the news with this guy. Yeah. Nino. No. A New York detective uses a tablecloth to cover the bullet-riddled body of mafia chieftain Carmine Galanti. He was having lunch, and he ate, he bought his lunch while he was trying to eat it. But Very nice-looking oh, picture. Oh, it's up here at the top, though. Mob scene ends White Sox doubleheader. Hmm. Hey, look on the positive side. You know, they weren't doing too well last night anyway. Maybe they'll win it huh, whenever they make up the game. If, in fact, they make up the game. I wonder if Bowie, Bowie Coon is going to find us. <laughs> you can't find us, man. We're not in baseball. <laughs> Unbelievable. Thanks again, as I said, uh, to all of you that showed up. And uh, you bad little co-hosts. I saw it on TV. It was just like everybody got worked up into such a frenzy. They just didn't know what else to do. And they ran out on the field and were dancing around. And... Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, man. So buy a paper and read all about it. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Bill Gleason in the uh, Sun-Times is not too pleased this morning with me. I think he likes disco, if I remember from his column of uh, a couple I days don't know. Ago. Who knows what he likes, you know? <laughs> Some old guy has no idea what's going on here. It's like I went around and... Excuse me, could you get up now, please, and go run on the field, okay? <laughs> could you light a bonfire in the center field? Sure, Steve, whatever you want. No? We didn't do anything except we went out there and had some fun with 50,000 people that we love and... Uh, they like us okay, and uh, it's turned into an unbelievably large thing. And I'm getting my voice back a little bit, which is nice. There you go. More coffee should help that. Yeah. So. I think we should thank the people who stayed in their seats and just kind of remained calm yeah. during the whole thing. Yeah, it was, you know. There was the majority of them there. Yeah, that was the majority of uh, uh, people that were that stayed in their, their seats. Uh, you know, it was a small, uh, well, not a small group, but certainly a, not, it wasn't like, you know, people on the field shooting each other and killing each other just a group of how many did they say about 7,000 uh, that varies I've heard anywhere from 1,000 to 10,000 yeah, so you know, see everything's uh, point is it wasn't everybody it was just some people that maybe were too buzzed on beer or something that just went wild and like Tim Weigel last night at the end of the sports put it in perspective he said hey what's the big deal here Gary Deeb I heard him on a talk show talking about it last night he says hey just like a high school rival or something relax you know High school rivalry. Relax. This is the 80s, okay? <laughs> Jeez. 629. This is a loop. <laughs> Home of the insane coho lips. FM 98. With Steve Dollar Company. Featuring this morning as our double feature. The music of uh, Robin Trower and Foghead. Here's some Robin Trower for you. You party animals.
This is a loop. FM 98, WLUP 638 with Steve Dahl and company. Um, I'm hoarse today. I'm hoarse. There's too much yelling and screaming going on last night at the Communist Park. Whew. Holy cow. <laughs> you maniacs. I'm sure you're going to hear about it all day and see it on the TV and blah, blah, blah. So we don't want to run it into the ground. We just want to say once again, thanks for supporting us. Thanks for coming out. We enjoyed ourselves. Um, we got some good Disco Sucks chants going. Some good co-ho, co-ho chants going. Uh, I think we're proving to the entire country, nay, the world, this morning that uh, we're sick and tired of this disco stuff being shoved down our throats. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, of course, we had uh, 7,000 or so people spill out out of the field after we left. And uh, the funny thing is, uh, Gary and I didn't know that until we got back inside in the press box. We left. We thought everything was cool. We thought it, if anything was going to happen, you maniacs would run out after us when we drove out in the Jeep. Because we drove out in a Jeep to uh, the center of the field to blow up the records and uh, to sing Do You Think I'm Disco. And we left and we came back around. We went up into the press box, and like I said before, I thought we were watching a replay of a, the end of a World Series game or something. <laughs> then I found out it was you guys, or some of you, the ones the ones that got a lost control of your buzz, and <laughs> you maniacs. So, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Check it out in the papers this morning. I, but uh, we do appreciate you coming out and supporting us and I think we have shown them that we're not into it <laughs> I think our mission was accomplished uh, I don't necessarily condone tearing up the field and all that kind of stuff but uh, like I said before too I can't be a babysitter you know you're in charge of your buzzes once you get them I'm just uh, <laughs> I'm just the uh, the general <laughs> I just fill the place up and blow the records up you know you have to be good little cause and mind your manners but I don't think anybody seriously hurt or anything, so let's not worry about it. Let's let the press blow it out of proportion. What the hell, huh? It only helps in our crusade against disco. 6.40, we got some biz to take care of. I apologize, my voice being kind of uh, out of it here and all this morning, but uh, uh, there's just a lot of yelling and screaming going on, and uh, whew, it was intense, you know. I think uh, my voice is hoarse from all the, uh, uh, you know, every time I... Went somewhere, Disco uh, Sucks chant would start up, and I'd have to join in, of course, because I love to get sw swept swept up in the whole thing. So. And plus, uh, well, there was some screaming going on uh, you know, to, up in the press box. <laughs> what are you doing? Hey, I'm not doing it. Get out of here, you know? Jeez. <laughs> 641. This is a loop. FM 98. Steve Dog Company. Uh, we got some biz to take care of. We'll come back. And do some music from Bobby Seeger, okay? Okay. Hey, Snot, you listening in there? You might have to spend more time in here today to help me, because I can barely talk. All right? Maybe just write one newscast and do it over and over or something. We'll get Travis in there to help you, but or somebody. Travis, of course, is illiterate. That won't do you much good. Make for interesting newscasts, but, well, because I, I really am having a tough time here today. My voice is uh, S-H-O-T. What's that spell? All right, so we'll take care of the business, come back and do the Seeger, and uh, <laughs> I'm just blown away by everything that happened last night. Too, 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 too much. Okay, I guess, I think we understand now, you don't like disco, okay? <laughs> you maniacs. Santa Fe Speedway presents 1979 Carroll Stream Auto Parts. Okay, 644, this is The Loop, FM 98, Steve Dolico. I gotta go get some more. Uh, Laszlo. Oh, wow, man, what? Do you have any uh, ginseng uh, tea? Will that help my throat? Oh, it might, man. Okay, well, I'm going to try some of that. And huh, You listen to some music from Bob Seger on a loop. FM 98. <laughs> we, we checked out your night moves last night. You maniacs. Gee whiz. Okay, this is a loop, FM 98, 654, with Uncle Steve, a little snot-nosed Gary Meyer. Good morning, Uncle Steve. I'm starting to come around here. My voice is starting to get <clears throat> back to normal a little bit. It's very, 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 very hoarse, though. And very, I'm very sore this morning. My voice is sore. We went out and had a, several drinks last night, and uh, I'm a little 
wasted this morning too. We stayed downtown, me and the planet, and you stayed downtown too, and uh, went out and had drinks to unwind from the um, event. The event is that what they're calling it? That's what I, I don't know what to call it. See, that's the thing. I come, I come in here. I come. I come in here. I stumble in at the five after six, and uh, uh, the guy from the Sun Times is here, and it's all over the papers. And I got calls here from every radio station on the planet. Well, they, they found a piece of back. Skylab, and they wanted to know if uh, we were hurt. Yeah. Oh, no, that's right. We were 1,800 feet below the surface that day. Yeah, but I got all these people that want to talk about it, and that's in the paper, and I want to try to figure out what the hell is going on, what I'm supposed to say. I don't know what to say. You know? You know anything to say? I don't have anything to say. I, um... <laughs> I don't. Uh, it was think cool, you know. Yeah. It was cool, and then the Sobaniacs went on the field and went crazy. And I just think that uh, those w that were there could make up their minds. Uh, of course, they will. And yeah, yeah. But see, I'm worried about the people that weren't there. And well, that's the only thing. They're going to read all, a lot of the, a lot of the things that they're saying in the paper isn't true. We're listening to the radio last night. You were listening with me. You know, it's amazing. I mean, I was there. Okay, I know what happened. I mean, geez, it was you know because of me it all happened. <clears throat> And, uh, boy, just to hear the way that they just, when they don't know something, they just make up something whenever they want, you know, and it's aggravating. It's very frustrating. They're calling it Vexstock. Vexstock. Or do, 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 like Woodstock. <laughs> people, stay off the scoreboard, people. You're going to get hurt. You got to stand here and help me today. There's too much going on. I'm here. Uh, All right. I must uh, relay some of the uh, amusing things. I mean, come on. There were some amusing things that happened last hey, night. Hey, nobody got seriously hurt. You know, some people got... There were some injured. I don't know how it happened. If, about four people uh, broke an ankle or something like that. But anyway, there was a lady. This is early in the game. I'm walking down. Oh, yeah, yeah. This, this is, is great. This is funny. And I'm walking around the... Uh, bleachers and stuff and this lady passes she had this real weird house dress on and this gaudy jewelry and big ruby red mm. lipstick Hello, Wally. and she passed me I turned around and she had a, a little sign on her back said I'm the lady from Tiddly Park Hello, Wally. I can imagine his show this morning <laughs> oh. oh it was so disgusting <laughs> they were throwing records and then they blew them up oh boy and then they had a big bonfire in center field can I have the door chimes now? <laughs> Jeez. Unbelievable. You maniacs. Go, ho, go, ho. So, another victory, I guess, for the coal lips. <laughs> Jeez. Well, it'll get blown way out of proportion, and that'll be fun for us to watch, huh? But, uh, <coughs> I'm real sorry I got the cough, and now I'm hoarse. And what a day for all this to happen. And it's Friday the 13th. Friday the 13th. We're going to be somewhere tonight. <laughs> oh? Provided they don't put us in jail before then. I did read where Mayor Byrne came by the uh, the event and stopped by and saw everything was basically under control and just drove on. Hey, listen, i got to say that I thought the coppers, the Chicago coppers, did a wonderful job last night outside. They really kept things under control. Everything went pretty well security-wise. Uh, the only thing is, maybe to prevent those people from running out on the field, there could have been security lining the walls at that point because yeah, that's when... Yeah, see, a bunch of Andy people, Frains. Those are just little kids. How are they going to stop? A couple of people jump out, and that's the lead. Just people uh, yeah. starting it. And then, of course, oh, it must be cool to run out to the field. And it wasn't. It, see, the funny thing is, is they played up like the people out on the field were out there fighting and killing each other. They were just anti-disco maniacs, co-lips, just like you and me, Gary. Out there dancing around, just getting off on the fact that we blew up 50,000 disco records 10 minutes previous to that, you know? And the field was prepared for the second game. We were sitting there waiting for it. Yeah, they pulled you. Now, whoever pulled off the turf was a bad little horsey, a bad little coho. Put your little bottom up to the radio. Let Uncle Steve spank it. Ooh, I love it when I'm stern with you. I'm going to have to go and buy some grass seed now, you know, for the Vex. <laughs> Here's some grass seed. We're going to be talking. I got a bunch of seeds. <laughs> no, not that kind of grass seed. Um, I got millions of them. I know, not that kind of grass seed. But, so there were some bad little horses, but for the most part, the people on the field were just running around. You know. God, 
<laughs> Relax. I happen. guess this is the most important thing in the whole country today, right? <laughs> Don't worry about so. the, the fuel thing, the energy thing. Don't worry about any of that stuff, okay? <laughs> Don't worry about a, an impending recession. Yeah. I don't think that's uh, important. Yeah, who cares? Don't worry about n- nuclear power or any of that. <laughs> Let's worry about what we did last night, okay? Since nobody really got hurt or anything. I think that's important. If this would have happened, do you think, uh, during a pennant uh, thing for the Sox or anything else, and people did it, they'd call it fan fever, and it's wonderful. We want a pennant. The sirens go off. But because mm-hmm. it happens in the middle of summer... And it's just related to some event not totally related to baseball. And because it's, it's tied in with so rock and roll, you know. <laughs> baseball, you know, sports writers and the, the, those types are traditionally very conservative. And they were flipped. They thought they were for, on another planet. Couldn't believe it. You know, and then they're saying in here that the people that were there weren't baseball fans. It's, come on, how do you know? Did you talk to them? <laughs> you didn't talk to them. You sat in your little booth with your free hot dogs and beer. <laughs> and then you just make things up. You know, give me a break. All right. Yeah. We had a wonderful time. Once again, thanks to everybody that came. We'll do it again. Don't worry about it. <laughs> okay? This does not signal the end of anything. This is just the beginning. All right? And next time, don't tear up the field and stuff, okay? Because then you get Uncle Steve in trouble. I'm going to get spanked today for this, you know? I'll be getting beaten about the face by the management. Outside of that, there were thousands of people in their seats and would have enjoyed a second game. Yeah, we were ready for uh, it. And the umpires didn't want to do it. They were probably freaked. You know? Nobody took their picture. It's the only people on the field, and they always know they'll get their picture in the paper, it seems. They know where the cameras are, so yeah. that's how that happens. Yeah. yeah, well, and also, you know, I, I really, I think if we do it again, it would be advisable not to throw records at the ball players during the first game and stuff. I mean, you know, there were some people that could have behaved better, but what are you going to do? I can't walk around and uh, be a babysitter for everybody. I mean, that's the way... That's the way the world works. You know, there are, just like in fourth grade when the teacher used to say, now there are a few of you that are going to spoil it for everyone. You know, and, oh, God, give us a break, teach. It's the same <laughs> deal. What are you going to do? So, <laughs> so there, 701, here's yeah. Snot with some news. Life goes Will on. you stick around, though, and help me out here? I'm getting phone calls up the kazoo and the, the yeah. wazoo. And no the, problem. It's 74 degrees right Yoo-hoo. now. Uh, considerable cloudiness today, hazy, very warm and humid with scattered showers near the lake and southern sections. Highs will be in the 80s but lower near the lake. All sub firemen, exhausted from more than 100 hours of firefighting, continued hauling out and dousing smoldering one-ton bales of paper from a south suburban warehouse this morning. The fire at the FCFSC, rather, Corporation Warehouse on Crawford and Alsip began last Sunday and involved as many as 125 men from 25 suburbs and fire protection districts at its height and only nearing its end more than four days later. The cause of the fire is yet unknown, pending an investigation by the state fire marshal's office. A $500 fine for an overdue library book could be... The Loops Jeff Finch has that story. Do you ignore the due date on books you take out at the Chicago Library? You could be in for a real surprise soon then. Yesterday, the city council approved an ordinance that sets fines for people who keep overdue books, fines ranging up to $500. Library Commissioner Donald Sager says disappearing books cost taxpayers about $700,000 a year. I just checked out Ann Landers Encyclopedia from A to Z, so I want to get that back in time. A report by the Federal Aviation Administration yesterday, critical of American Airlines mechanics, brought a firm response from an airline executive. A report in Tulsa, Oklahoma, Tribune yesterday, quoted the FAA as saying mechanics who worked on the American Airlines jetliner that crashed in Chicago May 25th were ill-trained. But R.J. Mazzolo of American Airlines says the firm feels it is premature and unfair for anyone to uh, prejudge why the aircraft crashed. The Carter administration is finally conceding that a mild recession will occur this year. In fact, it may have already begun. In its mid-year update on the economy, the administration also predicted inflation and unemployment will be worse than previously thought. At 7.03, we'll take a look at sports, traffic, weather, and Steve comes back after this.